Hey guys, welcome back to another video on the Super Kai Guy channel. In the past, I had reviewed the Foxwell NT624 and the Foxwell NT644 Elite scanners, which I liked very much, as they offer a variety of functionality. But both could be considered a little bit pricey for the average car owner. So today, we're taking a look at this Foxwell NT604 Elite, which is available on Amazon for a much better price of $160. Uh, you can also often find a 10 to $15 coupon bringing it down to $145 and even a free battery tester is usually included with one of these. Check out the links in the description for current pricing and promotion as this stuff changes all the time. So now let's just take a quick look and see what's included with the device. On the cover here we can see obviously the name and it tells us how it's compatible with all makes. Uh, four different systems, so we'll see what those are. AutoVin, which scans your system automatically, that's nice. 4.3 LCD screen, free updates, I'm actually updating mine right now. You can take the SD card out, plug it into your computer, use the Foxwell Assist, I believe, software, and then we'll do kind of the rest for you. So, pretty good value. Let's see what else they say in the back. Provides easy diagnosis for 70 American, Asian, and European cars. Great. Works on latest 2019 and 2020 models. Since I'm updating it right now, I assume it will work just as well in 2021, but we can confirm that with Foxwell. Uh, it identifies cars quickly, so that's that same auto van, reads and clear codes of engine, transmission, ABS, and airbags. Now that's a big one. So not a lot of these will actually show you live data for transmission or ABS or airbags. We're gonna see how well that works. Uh, shows live data for sensors in text and form, but that's pretty normal for a lot of uh, scanners, so that's pretty good. Uh, a few other items in here as well. So, looks good so far, right? But this is the graphical stuff that they were talking about. You can graph the live data. Very nice. Let's open it up, see what's inside. All right, so here we have the actual device. Very nicely constructed, just the same as the expensive version. So the other version is three times as much, the 644, but same construction, same nice screen, good clicky buttons so you feel when you press them, which I like. Nice and rugged. So if I drop this, I wouldn't feel like I have broken it, you know, which is nice. Uh, we also have the cable that goes into the scanner and this, the OBD2 part that goes into your car mini USB cable for updating, but like I said, you can also use uh, the little adapter that's actually in my computer right now to update it via the micro SD card. We have some documentation that advertises a few other products, warranty stuff, quick start guide so you can see how to actually update it. So it will tell you right there. And a general manual, uh, since a lot of these share similar functions um, you have kind of one for all manual decently written uh, actually makes sense so if you read through it you can understand what's going on alrighty let's go plug this into the car and see what it can actually do how well it reads that transmission data what are the special functions let's find out alrighty we're in the car now so let's plug it in and see how fast it loads I always like to test this because if you're working in multiple cars you don't want it to take forever to turn on as you can see it took about oh, three seconds for it to fully load pretty good now you're presented with this main menu you have a few options in here so you have your auto VIN that's the option that we talked about earlier where it will automatically scan your car find the VIN number and decode it to basically see what car you have OBD2 so this is the standard uh, scanning of the car basically what a lot of the scanners can do where you can see live data, graph it, everything else. We'll go into that briefly, not too deep into that. That's not the main focus of this scanner. The main focus here is the diagnostics, like I said, or like we saw in the packaging, you said we can do ABS system, SRS system, print transmission, you know, see all the data for that, which is kind of exciting for, you know, lower cost scanner like this. Settings, let's see what's in here. Language unit, shortcuts, beeps display test so you can see you know like it'll test each color don't really need to worry about that update so you can go to updates here if you choose to use the cable instead of the micro sd card 
data management, this is where you can play back your recorded content. So if you record the log, you can play it back in here. Okay, so we're gonna start with AutoVin and see what it does. All right, so it says automatic VIN acquisition. Let's do that. There you go, so that's my VIN number. Yes, we're gonna confirm. It has decoded it. We're saying yes, that's correct, everything looks good. After a few seconds, you're presented with a diagnosis screen, which is the meat and potatoes of this scanner. We're gonna click OK and do a quick scan. We can just pick the modules separately. So if you know exactly you're only working on the transmission or just on this or just on the engine, you don't have to scan the entire car, but I'm gonna scan all the modules that are available on this scanner, which are, like I mentioned, ABS, SRS, engine, and transmission. If you were to purchase the 644, the NT644 Foxwell, that one will allow you to see every single module on uh, on this car, and that's kind of the biggest difference between, you know, a hundred forty dollar scanner and a four hundred dollar scanner. That one you can do whatever you want with pretty much every single module. On this one, it's specific to the items that I mentioned. But for most issues, I mean, this is great and this will do it on any car that's on the list. And we'll go into that a little bit later. We'll see all the cars that it supports, but it's a lot. It's pretty much every make and model that is commonly available, I guess. If it's something very obscure, maybe it's not gonna support it, but most everything that's been made in the last 20 years or so is probably supported by this. Okay, so now that it's loaded, we have our DME uh, control module. So that's the, that's the engine computers. We have our transmission, stability, stability control, park brake, and crash safety. So that's all the stuff that we have in here, right? All right, let's go into the transmission, as that's the one that's kind of the most exciting for me, at least. We can read the codes, let's see if there's anything here. Shouldn't have any codes on this car. Okay, no codes, great. I'm gonna click OK. Obviously, you can clear those codes if anything's found. Now we can go to live data, and this is where a lot of the very useful uh, information can be found, and a lot of the troubleshooting will happen. This is why this scanner is a good value in my, you know, in my opinion, because the features that you get with this option just here is like well, well worth the money. It's gonna save you so much time. You don't have to go to the dealer if you have an issue or you think your transmission's overheating or something like that, you can easily check this and you'll have the information, you know, without having to pay $180 at the BMW dealer for diagnosis. This kind of device pays for itself and, you know, after one use basically. All right, let's let it load and we'll get back to it. And one thing I wanted to mention, you don't actually have to update it. I was saying that I'm updating, but it works out of the box. The updates are just for newer models, any fixes, things like that. But for most everything, it will just work. All right, so here are all the options that we have for our transmission. We have operating variables. So all of these uh, sensors are available to be read out. So we can say select all, okay. And obviously my car is off right now, so you can't see anything. Like there's not a lot of uh, value here, but let me scroll down a little bit. Okay. So what if we graph this one? See, I mean, the engine's not running, so it's not gonna show us anything. Well, actually it's showing, showing us the oil temperature for the transmission is 14C, which makes sense. It's about, I don't know, 60 something degrees outside. So there you go. If the car was running, you would cl clearly see, you know, that change. All right, so I guess that makes sense, right? You see all of these PIDs that are available and you can graph them, you can show them regularly, whatever works for you. All right, let's see what gear indicator is. All right, so that's actually a pretty cool feature. I didn't know this had this, so we're gonna select all of them, click OK. Now, gear selector is right there, right? So it actually tells us if it's in park, you know, what gear we're in, whatever else. So what if we, well, I guess it's not gonna let us change since the car's not started, but I don't want to start the car. But basically, you can see live data for the information that's happening right here. That's very nice. All right, let's go back. St 
status request. So this is some information that you can request from the transmission to see, you know, the positioning of certain solenoids and things like that, or the starter motor. Voltage supply, so we can see what is getting to the transmission. All right, so that's the voltage right now. Probably shouldn't run for too long in accessory mode, so I don't drain my battery. Uh, Clutch-related adaptation values, all right. So a lot of information in here. I'm not very familiar with this one, so I'm not gonna try to explain it. And adaptation functions, okay. So we can select this and see what's in here. Okay. All right, so we can look at the adaptations for like the rear axle and what was the other one? Yeah, so I guess the rear axle. All right, so as you can see, there's a lot of very, very useful information, and this is just for the transmission. We can do the same thing for all the other modules that we have available in here. So if we go to, let's say, the engine module, let's see what kind of live data we can see in here. And honestly, this large screen works really well for stuff like this. Yes, the unit is a little bit bigger because of this, but it's so much easier to read unless you need a tiny, tiny thing for like a motorcycle or to hide it somewhere. Why wouldn't you have one of these, right? Throw it in the trunk, keep it with you in case something happens, you can easily get back on the road. What are some of the negatives for this device? Well, you can't scan all of the modules like I mentioned earlier, but that's kind of expected. You know, unless you pay at least over $200, you're not gonna really be able to read all of the modules on every vehicle available. You might be able to get a scanner that only works for your specific car, but you know, it's not gonna be, it's not gonna be reading a module for every single car. So, you know, for uh, somebody that works on many cars, this is great without having to spend a lot of money. All right, let's see, diagnostics request. Okay, so we can see all of this information for the engine as well. Look at that, that's a lot of info. Even the Vanos position, the engine has to be running, obviously. But this is very, for a BMW, this stuff is so important. And you cannot see any of this information using the regular OBD2 functionality, right? Look at that, it's tons of live data that you can get from here. I'll scroll through it just in case people are interested. Some of this is available through OBD2, like regular live data, but definitely not everything. All right, let's see, engine oil temperature. It should show us even, there you go. So 13.5 Celsius. And you can select all of them at once, which is you know, gonna be a little bit more difficult to see. And it's graphable as well. We can clear and read codes, obviously. All right, so I think you get the idea of what each of this uh, we, each of these modules will do for you. Let's go back to the main menu and we'll just quickly take a look at the general OBD2 functionality. All right, we're back at the main menu and what you just saw was actually this. So if you go to diagnostics, this is where it automatically selected our car and took me to the correct region and make and model of the car. But let's take a look at what this car, what the scanner supports. So we have Chrysler and Ford for America, Asia. And do understand that I haven't actually updated or installed all of the cars on mine because I don't work with a lot of them. So check the list um, on the website just to make sure, you know, the car that you need is included. So these are all the Asian cars. Here's some of the China stuff. I removed a lot of these when I was updating just because I, I will never work on them. Some of the European cars. I will include, I guess I'll include a tiny little clip in here to show you all the ones that you are available to install or update. All right, let's go back. And the last thing I wanted to show you is the OBD2. This is the standard uh, scanner that a lot of scanners can do, but this one can do as well. This will check your um, readiness for emissions. 
Uh, so we see no codes. Monitor is not available. R3, monitor is okay. Eight, and if you have inconcluded, in, con in conclusion, or whatever it's called, that means you have to keep driving the car for like 15, 20 minutes before it's available. All right, that's cool. So now it's gonna select the protocol that works for this car and then scan it. All right, now we're in. So we can read the general, not car specific, but general codes through here. We can look at the system status. That was the same screen we just saw. We can erase the general codes, see live data. I'll go back to that in a second. Freeze frame, I am writing this. So that's the same stuff we just saw, except uh, I guess slightly nicer presentation. Onboard monitoring test, component test, vehicle information. So you have a decent amount. We actually have DTC lookup, which is nice. You can look up the general code and see what they mean. But the one I like in here is live data. This will read all of the PIDs that are available on the car. On a car like this, it's a BMW 550. There are hundreds of them basically. So we can select the complete list or we can do a custom list and select just the stuff that we want to be displayed. So a lot of stuff for if your car doesn't run right, things like that, you can maybe want to look into short term fuel trim or long fuel trims engine RPM, things like that. You can, we would select whatever you need and then have all of that information available right there. And you can even graph all of it as well. So let me see if I can start the car if it's gonna change a lot of things. So we'll see how it works. So let's do multi-graph. There you go. So you can do multiple graphs and you know, shows you all of the information as the car is running. So I think that's pretty cool. All right, we can exit out of all of this. And last thing I wanted to mention, the updates are free and they don't take that much time, especially if you select just the ones you need. Maybe you don't have to upgrade for an entire world if you're just you know working on one specific brand. So that's nice. There's no software subscription or anything. If you'd like to purchase one, uh, there is a link in the, sub in the description. If you like the video and like review videos from me or would like to see more, do like do hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next one.